Hello everyone and welcome. I just decided, hey, I'm going to live stream today. Why not? Right? <laughs> so welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Um, sorry for the, the surprise stream. I just, uh, you know, I, it's Sunday night, Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd get one of my characters pushed over to Blender and uh, start to mess around with a render. Blender render. I'd love to say that. So anyway, all right, let's get to it. Um, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. Let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. I'm streaming on uh, StreamYard, so it's kind of a different than I'm used to. You know, I usually go straight from OBS and push it over to, to YouTube. But today I like to be able to pop up uh, people's comments like, uh, like this one. Hey Josh, how's it going? <laughs> So, yeah. All right. Hey, Allison. Um, okay, so let's pop over to this. This is where we left off last time, if you, if you watched the, the last stream. Um, and let's see. And I'm not going to pull up the, um, the, the, the concept here. I'm just going to push it over to Blender, and I'll, I'm going to show you how I prep an prep a model and get it, get it ready to push over there. So, okay. There's a slight delay, like in my, in my voice versus what you hear. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Um, so blender doesn't like things with multiple subdivision levels. So you have to go through each of your sub tools and make sure that you have deleted all the lower subdivisions. And you can rebuild them over in Blender, but you can't if you push it over straight across um, from ZBrush right into Blender, then it's gonna just default to the lowest subdivision level, and that's typically not what you want. So hey, hey, doing well. Doing well, doing well. Thanks. Uh let's see. So, and I also want to make sure everything is named properly. Um and that all of my hidden stuff is, I, I actually go through and I delete it. So if I'm not using it, I don't, I don't use it. I delete it. Okay, so let's see. We got the head. And what I'll typically do is I'll open up the geometry while I have the subtool list open. And if you didn't know this, if you want to have two menus open at once, you actually hold down shift and open the second menu. So... If I were to open this geometry menu right now, it closes the subtool menu and opens the geometry menu. But if I hold down shift and open that up, then now you have both. Okay, so you can see this one has four subdivision levels. I'm just gonna delete the lower one, arrow down, and just look at this. And what I'll typically do is, uh, Zebra, or, uh, Blender doesn't like dynamic subdivisions either. So I will either push it over as is, um, what are we looking at here? This is the bun. Oh, this is hidden underneath all this hair. I will either push it over as is and then add a subdivision modifier over in Blender, which I probably will do. Um, or I will apply the subdivision levels and then delete the lowest. So then it is smooth and I don't have to mess around with it. But for this one, I'm just going to leave it dynamic. Okay. So this one, um, it's also dynamically subdivided. Same with this one. Now this one has subdivision levels. Um, so I'm just going to delete the lower on these. And let's see, this one has dynamic. And this one is dynamic. Eyebrows dynamic. Now these eyebrows, um, I want to look at, yeah, see this, these have dynamic and thickness on them. So, um, what I want to do is I'm going to apply this because, um, over in blender, I would have to apply a, a thickness modifier. I can't remember the name of it. And then, and then also a subdivision modifier. And I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. So I'm just going to apply it and then delete it. Okay, and then this is low. Yeah, I'm just gonna apply it and then delete it. Same. Okay, hey Dario. Um, 
have a little bit of difficulty in stylized characters. They look easy, but in my opinion, more complex than a likeness. Yeah. <laughs> Solidify. Thanks, mister. Okay, same with this one. Apply it. Delete. And might as well. I could do it with all of these because I know that, you know, I it'll be less time that I'll have to go through. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to apply all of these. Delete the lower. It's going to be a little heavier to push over, uh, but that's okay. because it'll be ready to go. Okay, let's see. That's where I got to. Bum, bum, bum. And if you didn't know this, arrowing up and down is um, will arrow th through your subdivision or your subtool, sorry. Okay, and these, it doesn't look like, oh, it does have, okay, this one has six levels. Let me look at this closer. Okay. It's pretty dense. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to undo that and then see if I can go lower with this. And delete one higher, one lower. That's that's a little better. Okay, that works. And her eyes. Um, I'm gonna replace her eyes over in Blender, but I'm just gonna I'll delete lower so I can see the way that they're facing. And you can see we're getting pretty high. We're at 3.8 million. It's not really that high, honestly. Um, apply. Apply. I should make a. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so we ended up at three point, almost four million. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, so we're all done. We've gotten rid of all of the subdivision levels, and we're st stuck with the the highest subdivision levels. Um. Oops. Thanks, Allison. Appreciate it. How are you doing? It's been a while. <laughs> Hey, Max, how you doing? Okay, so um, let's push this over. And yeah, most of you, st so I announced this over in my Discord channel, at least my robot did. So everybody that was kind of hanging out over in the Discord channel is now coming over here. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop. This video is public, so anybody can catch it and watch it or watch it back. And uh, if you don't know, it's a, it's a 3D course called the 3D Character Workshop. That's this logo right underneath me here. If you want to know more about it, you can go check out 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I give away these brushes and stuff for free. And I'm starting to stream on my own channel so I can start to talk about other programs other than the just ZBrush. Typically, I stream only on the ZBrush live streaming channel. And uh, they're all about ZBrush, of course. So, but I use other programs in my pipeline and I wanted to kind of share those with you. Okay, so to do this, I've actually installed, and I'm not gonna go over it, but I've act actually installed an add-on in Blender called GoB. It's kind of like GoZ, but it's an unsupported fan built uh, plugin or add-on in Blender, they're called add-ons that is called go B, and it's made by a guy named jose canseco not to be confused with the other more popular not more pop more well-known <laughs> jose canseco anyway it's on uh i believe it's on github you can download it install it just like you would any other add-on um it, he provides instructions for it and everything and once you get it up and running then all you have to do is go over to blender um let's see let's turn this off so you guys can see it um, now I'm inside Blender here and you, you'll see up top, there's this export import manual. So you have to push this import button and then it puts Blender in kind of this listening mode. Okay. So Blender is now listening for, um, your export button to be pushed over in ZBrush. So if I go back to ZBrush and I want to, um, th there's three buttons now there's go Z there's all, and there's visible. Now I want, um, I, I just want everything visible to go over. I could send my ruler over there as well. Um, sometimes I like to just, just for fun um, and it will go over and it will bring its textures and everything. 
what's nice about this um, Go Z or Go B is it will bring all of the vertex colors over and it will automatically hook up a node inside of the Blender section that will make it make the um, vertex coloring visible and I'll show you where that's at so okay so let's get this going and it might I don't know my render might skip because this takes a lot of U or uh, CPU so I'm just gonna hit I'm gonna hit visible on this and then it'll just kind of cook you'll see it kind of pop through all your all your uh, sub tools and push everything over and then you'll hop over to Blender and you'll see your uh, your your timer just kind of spin for a minute while it loads. So I wish it would tell me how many people are watching at the moment. I think I can hop over to YouTube and see. So let's see. Yeah, about 21. Not bad, not bad. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to look at before I push that export button, and that is in ZBrush, you want to make sure that your uh, export scale is set to one. And by default, mine is set to 100, so... <laughs> Joshua, that's funny. Okay, so let me just, let me just hop over to ZBrush and check and see what, what it's at here. Yeah, 100. Okay, I'm going to change this to 1. Because it's going to come in either really, really small or really, really big. Okay, so export scale 1. That's something that you're going to want to look at. Now, if you're going back and forth between ZBrush and Maya, you will want that scale to be at 100. Um, unless you have your Maya set to millimeters. Okay, so anyway. Yep, see how she's just ginormous now? because she scaled up 100 and that's really not where we want it to be um, because Blender, it won't behave very well in Blender. You'll start to see some, some weirdities. So let's go back to, um, actually, I'm just gonna clear this out. Actually, I think I can just push it back over again and it will scale everything. So let me do it one more time. Uh, let's push it over visible, okay. That should just cook everything again and push it over again and at the right scale and replace everything that's because it's all named the same it should just replace everything over in blender the same so let's see let's go back here hey 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 well welcome everyone it's good to see everybody so tomorrow I'm not going to be streaming live on uh, ZBrush live stream because I'm going to be um, somewhere else. I can't tell you just yet until it's actually happened. But I'm really, really excited about it. I'm nervous about it. Oh my gosh. So it's, it's, some, it's a dream of mine and I, I can't wait to tell you guys about it. But I got to make sure it actually happens and everything is good <laughs> before I go... <laughs> hey, what's up, Hannibal? How you doing? <laughs> okay, so what you can see one by one things are being re-imported at the proper scale. That's why you don't see her head anymore because it's like popping down to the right scale. So sorry, it's taking a minute. That's what happens with render. Sometimes it takes a while. <laughs> Allison, yes. World's biggest ball of twine. I can't, I can't wait. All right. Still, still cooking. Hey, where'd it go? There it is, really small. So if I hit zero on my camera, or on, on my numpad, it goes to the camera. And if I push the period on my numpad, it it will focus on whatever I have is uh, selected here. And I can get rid of this box. Okay. Now this, this navigation is gonna seem kind of strange because I'm actually using a 3D connection uh, mouse. That's this space mouse. It's really, I, I like it a lot in Blender. Um, 
I like to be able to kind of go around and check. Hey, what's up, Brad? Uh, sorry if you answered this already, but are you using Go B? Hey, Samwise, yes. For Blender, ZBrush, yep, Go B. That's what this is across the top, export, import, and manual. Um, I was just also saying that you want to make sure that your export scale is a, is set to one, okay? Now, it's kind of, it's a little chunky, not bad though. Okay, and I do have this set to um, turntable, uh, not turntable, um, oh gosh, what is it called? Where I can spin it like this. Trackball, trackball navigation, which is like ZBrush. I like it like ZBrush so I can go all around my model, not just not just spin it around like in Maya. Okay, um, or or default blender, I believe is it's stuck to the y-axis. So um now I forgot to do something. I forgot to hit my add-on. Um okay. Let me just pop open my add-on here. Let's see, do I not have it? Oh, where is it? Hold on a second. I don't know why it's not showing up. I gotta go make sure my add-on is on. Sorry, I'm I'm kind of limping through this a little bit because it's I don't render in here too often. But um let's see here. It is right here. Where is it? Do I have to be in scope mode? Here, let me turn it off and back on again. There it is. Okay. I don't know why it wasn't showing up or I just wasn't seeing it, but here it is. <laughs> okay. So this is my add-on that I've commissioned to have built. I haven't released it yet. It's going, it's coming, but um, I, I like it because I like to render with it and I forgot to open it and push this button first because this is my custom workspace that I like. And so um, what that does is that makes a new, a new blender scene and it empties out everything else. It's kind of like uh, double clicking on my ruler file in, in ZBrush, it kind of clears everything out. So I apologize, I have to do that one more time and send it over here, <laughs> one more time. So, okay, let's try it one more time. We'll get there, we'll get there. But I do like that you guys get to see, see my pain a little bit. <laughs> okay, so let's send visible over one more time. Okay, let's go back to Blender. And basically what this is, is um, it's default sculpt mode. Yeah, the scale's now one. Um, default sculpt mode, or you have to be in, it, it will pop it into sculpt mode. And this is a render window down here. And this is a um, an image viewer window right here. So I can drag and drop images here. Um, yeah, it's starting to bring in everything. And then this middle window is set to uh, workbench with random colors turned on. I don't know why this is pushed in right here. That's kind of weird. I'll have to look at that. Strange. That looks busted. <laughs> looks like somebody pressed their thumb in there. but thanks for your patience. So what are you guys working on? I know a lot of you are coming over here from, like I said, from the Discord channel. You guys working on some Pokemon today? I'll pop over to ZBrush and look at that. I guess it is kind of pushed in right there. That's weird. Hey Mike, how you doing? Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm just trying to frame this up nice. Something like this. Okay, so, and I hope this doesn't mess my stream up, but over in Blender, there are these different viewport shader options. There's wireframe, um, there's just the, it's called workbench. 
and there's viewport shader and you can see it does pull in the vertex coloring um, this is pretty nice if, especially if you don't have a a really fast machine you can use this um, and then there is this last one which is render and by default i believe it's set up to render in eevee which is the real-time uh, game render engine so oh posing your pirate awesome had your kids pick up some Pokemon for me. <laughs> that's a that's an excuse to get Pokemon, right? <laughs> okay, so um, if you go to this camera right here, you can see what what engine is rendering right now. And yes, by default, it's set to EV. Um, and then you can see over here, you got EV, Workbench, and Cycles. Now, Cycles is a ray tracing renderer or a, a scan line renderer, it's sometimes called. Um, and then EV is a real time render, kind of like a game engine, like Unreal or Marmoset Toolbag or something like that. And which is, which is super nice because you get both in Blender, right? Now I do have, um, let me see, I'm gonna go pop over to shading for a second. Okay, so there's also these tabs across the top and these tabs are just workspaces. So you can see my 3DCW, this is my, this is a workspace and there's layout, modeling, sculpting, anything you want to do. Th these are just workspaces that are just reorganized in different ways, depending on what you want to do. They're not really anything uh, particular as far as like, you can only access certain things from certain workspaces. Um, but I like to go to the shading one to, um, just to go, you can change the, it'll show you the nodes inside here. And depending on which object you have selected, it will show you the material node for that object. Um, and you can see that this is, this vertex color is already hooked up to go into the base color. So that's why you're seeing it proper. Um, but you can also click over to world. And I need to change this because um, the guy who's been setting up my workspace this is uh he, he did this and i think it's too complex so i want to um yeah i want to adjust it so it's not this way just going to unhook this for a second and see what it does change it to ev okay good now it's just dark i don't want any lights other than the lights i add so um that's what i wanted to make sure i just wanted to clear that Otherwise it's, there's, it's got this lighting situation going on, but I don't necessarily want that right now. Okay. Okay. So, Hey Mark, how you doing? So I'm going to go back to this and you'll see nothing here. And, um, inside of blender, they have collections and collections are a lot like folders in ZBrush and that you can see all these right here. And, one of them says try lights. So if I turn that on, so it's visible, now you can see the lights that I have set up in the scene. And you can't see them over here until you uh, show them. So I'm gonna turn on extras right here underneath uh, this, this kind of double circle thing. And now you can see the lights in the scene. It's just three area lights. That's why it's called try lights. And it's just set up an EV to display these tri lights like this. And then I just like to go in there and I like to edit them in EV, and then um, then switch over to cycles eventually, and then turn on some different things. So, um, but before I get that going, I want to add. Um, let me see. Do I not have that open? Um, I like to add Danny. Danny Max eyes in here. Let me see. I don't know why it's not available. Oh, come on. Not here. Sorry, one second. Let me just go look for it. I thought it was installed in this version of Blender, but it's not. Usually things will just carry over, but sometimes it won't. Any Mac Eye Designer. Okay, let's try this. Let's 
So you have to install it and then you have to turn it on. Okay. Yeah, Danny Mac makes this eye designer and it's super, super cool. Uh, it's, it's kind of spendy for what it is, but um, I like it a lot and I feel like it's worth every, every penny. So essentially you'll see all of the add-on, well, not all of them, but a lot of the add-ons that if you buy them or find them for free, You'll see them show up over right here on these tabs. Like you can see the 3D Character Workshop one. And now the eye designer one just showed up. So I just clicked on import eye here. Did it work? Hey Wilberth, how you doing? Got some kind of a message here. Oh geez. It says no. <laughs> Gosh dang it. Great. Well, sh I'm having a rough time here. They usually just show up here. Oh, maybe it's because I'm in sculpt mode. Let me go hop over to object mode. Come on, work, baby. There we go. All right. There they are. Okay, that's strange that they're showing up like this. Oh, there it goes. Okay. There, check those eyes out. There's, I mean, that looks super creepy where they're at right now. <laughs> but, um, hey, Brad. I think I'm, I think I already said hello to you, didn't I? <laughs> oh, hello again. Okay. I'm trying to remember how these go. Pose mode, where are you? Brad, I might need your help. <laughs> Let's wait, paint, text your mate. Uh, where is... I usually see a uh, pose mode up here. need to show the bones that's what I need to show bones there we go okay that's why so um, I just needed to show the because these eyes are rigged um, that means they have a whole bone set up in them and um, and so I just needed to go up into this this is basically a show overlays there's these overlays in blender um, that allow you to see things and if I might the bones weren't showing so I wasn't able to grab them and some, some options don't show up until you have certain things selected, like bones. Even though this doesn't look like a bone, this is a handle that's connected to a bone. So I select that, and now I should be able to, yep, see pose mode right here. So if I go into pose mode, now I can grab this handle and move it. See that? And then I can scale it down and put it into place. Now there's a there's a way in to do and I, I need to ask Danny, but there's a way to do like a proxy mode where you can select one eye and then the other eye and you can pop it so it matches, but I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> so okay. Um I'm gonna hide the head so I can see these eyeballs. I was pretty good at guessing the size of this thing. And I just get it as close as I possibly can. So one on the numpad is front view and three is side view. Okay. And once I get this into place, this one eye, I can click on mirror eye and it pops the other one up there. It's pretty nice. And then I can show the head again, and then I can hide the other eyes. And you can kind of see she looks all cross-eyed because they're huge. Let's go into, oh, okay. And you're seeing, <laughs> since the iris is so deep, you're actually seeing the, the eye cavity 
inside these eyes. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to scope that away. <laughs> okay. We'll get there guys. We'll get there. Um, but as far as the iris size goes, you'll see that you get all of these options now. And I'm going to hide the head again. <laughs> this is going to look super funny for a minute. Okay. So look at all these options. They're super cool. So you get um, iris size. So let's take a look at what the uh, original iris, iris size is. Eh, about that. Okay. And then pupil size, you can adjust. So you check that out. It's so cool. And then um, I can change the, the iris color to be like that, that orangish color that her eyes are. And you can reduce the iris detail so it looks a little more, you know, there's more or less of those little uh, lines in there. Just so it looks more stylized, you know. That's pretty good. But I like it because it comes with reflections already. It comes with cornea already. It looks, it looks more realistic, you know. Yeah, it's awesome. It's totally worth the money. I mean, it's, it's, it's really not that expensive, like considering, you know? Okay, so this one, if you hit rotate, not Y, R, X maybe? No, R, Z, okay. So if you hit R to rotate, and then you hit um, either X, Y, or Z, it'll allow you to rotate it on an axis. So I can rotate this around and kind of pose it. That's why when, yeah, over in, over in ZBrush, it's really nice to just be able to put your eyes in place and kind of get a proxy going on, you know, as far as like, this is what I want it to look like and, and be the, like the direction. And then I can just use this. Um, use these up use these eyes to uh upgrade the look in no time you know super cheaty but i love it okay so rz bring this back a little bit too far okay and this our rotate is based off the camera, so you can kind of turn the camera up like this and then just rotate it a little bit. Can you export those eyes? Like, where would you want to export them? Since I'm rendering in Blender, I don't really need to export them out of here. Um, but they're not really meant for sculpting. They're, they're meant for rendering, and I don't know if you could bring them into Maya or something like that. I'm not sure if that's the way you're wanting to go. Is there a way to have both eyes rotate? Yeah, you can just select both of them and move them together, I believe. But you might, you know, I take that back. I'm not sure how to rotate locally um, when you have both of them selected because I think they'll both rotate as a, as a group. Oh, to a material, like export them as a material? I don't know. Like if you want to bring them into a game engine or something like that, that's something to ask Danny. I'm not sure. You'll want to use Decimation Master before pushing to Blender. I, I didn't use Decimation Master, by the way, Brad. I just pushed it over. So I guess it depends on how large your machine is. Um, like this, I just pushed over 4 million polys. And it's, it's working. I can, I can use it pretty, pretty well. Okay, I'm going to change this over to Object Mode and turn this off. I'm just going to go into sculpt mode. Oh, individual origins. Okay. Interesting. Oh, you're saying that you can, he has it in his tutorial. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Oh, somebody asked a question. Okay. Th well, thanks for answering Brad. I appreciate it. Okay. So, um, 
with her head selected, I'm going to go to sculpt mode. And um, Blender has sculpting capabilities. And they're pretty dang, pretty dang good. Hit period. Oh, with the eye selected. Okay. I thought you were saying to hit it right now. I'm like, wait a minute. That goes to the origin of the, the thing I have selected. Oh, that drives me crazy. Okay. So going from, going from ZBrush to Blender navigation. That's why I like the 3D connection mouse is because I can use it in both programs and it doesn't make my brain go crazy. Um, I'm going to save this in case it crashes. Okay, let's see, Medusa. Render 01. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna turn on symmetry. Symmetry in, Z in sculpting mode for Blender is right up here. You can see it right there, okay? And then there's a lot of brushes that are a lot like ZBrush. And then there's this one called, well, there's this one called Draw. And I think I might just use that to push in the eye sockets. It looks like, it looks kind of strange right now, but I'm going to use it to push this in. Because that's pulling it out. So Control is push it in. You can see it's a little bit slow and that's because I'm in, um, I'm in render, I'm like literally rendering it as I sculpt, which is crazy. Which, whoops. That's why it's pop, that's why it's going so slow, like crip, crip, but I can't see it unless it's being rendered. So I'm just gonna kinda work with it that way. Let it catch up. And I can click over to this, uh, this draw sharp mode. And this, it has a lazy mouse kind of like in ZBrush and it's kind of like de the detail brush. Okay. And then these eyes are kind of sticking out right here a little bit. So I'm going to grab, I'm just going to use the grab brush. So G and that's like move in ZBrush. I just kind of grab it and pull it. And again, the reason why it's so slow is just because I'm doing this in render mode. I could probably switch for this. Yeah. That's a little better. I do have to wait for it to catch up still every time I move. <laughs> and your, your machine might be not as strong as this one. And I'm also rendering this twice. Well, I was once here and once down here. So I could also switch this to uh, workbench and it will go, there we go. Now it's smooth. Yeah, my machine was just kind of struggling a little bit, trying to render all the things, all the places. But this has a beautiful sculpt mode. Looks like I pulled this out a little too much. It's looking pretty good. And you know, um, Blender will reveal some surface stuff that you can't really see in ZBrush as well. So you can see a few of this, the undulations happening on the surface here. So usually in Blender, I'll go back in and I'll touch it up, just like smooth things out a little bit more. Um, I can run a crease like along the nose a little more if I wanted to. It's like, it's called pinch. 
or there's one called crease. They do two, two different things. You can just kind of clean things up. Yeah, see this bump right here? It kind of goes in and out and in again. I don't want that. Do you guys know how to get rid of this big shift word? <laughs> I mean, I like to, I like, I like to, so you guys can see what I'm pushing, but it's also distracting. And I usually use um, the bracket keys, like in Photoshop, to make my brush go up and down. But um, F is what you can use to change the size of it quicker. There we go. That's cleaner. Look how clean. Ooh. All right. Let's pinch this. I like how the pinch brush in Blender is just a little... It's more subtle by default. Okay. Let's try that. See what that looks like. I think there's still some I have to push in over here. Yeah. So also this eye designer, um, when you drop the eye designer in there, it gives you a new collection called eye designer that you can hide. Turn off tool tips in the preferences. Well, that I think it's a Windows thing, no? Where would that be? Tool tips? Okay, let's try. Aha, there you go. Thanks, Brad. You're the best. Yep, you did it did it. You're the best. You win. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to use this draw. Ooh, that's heavy. Okay. Hold on a second. It's too powerful. Turn the strength down. <laughs> now it's not powerful enough. I just don't want to separate that eyelash away from the outer head but I want to push this eye socket in right here I don't really care that it looks like not not super sexy because of the eyes in front of it obviously okay let's hide this and let's show it over here let's see what it looks like okay not bad Okay, now that we have that, um, I'm looking for my, let's see, also there's an add-on for screencast keys if you want. Yeah, I, I do need to get that, Samwise, for sure. Okay, so again, this is just being rendered out in Eevee and um, with, with three area lights. So I can go through here and just adjust some of these materials now that I've, I've sculpted that out. I can go back to object mode. And I'm just holding down Control plus Tab to go to the different modes. Now I'm in object mode. And the, how you can tell if you're in object mode is your uh, sculpt brushes go away and these tools show up okay and i think i want to just adjust this just a little bit so you can see more now <laughs> um danny's eye collection 
comes with a light in it. And I'm just because it's, uh, it's the specular light. So it makes it brighter. I don't necessarily want that, but sometimes it, it's okay. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna adjust the some materials on here. If I go to material, and I go to um, metallic, I'm gonna crank metallic up and just see what that does here. There we go. I'm gonna do something though. I'm going to join areas up so it makes this bigger and then make this so I can see it better. Okay. Now with this add on, um, my, my 3d character workshop add on, there is, it's set up at the uh, dimensions that Instagram wants. So it's already perfectly, you know, like the resolution size is good. So, um, that's, the camera's already set up to be the right size. And there's also two different uh, resolution settings. There's 1080 by 1350. And then when you're ready, you can crank it up to 320, 3240 by 4050. So, and you can add the 3D character workshop logo if you want. And you can add text in there if you want, like, you know, concept by, sculpt by, that kind of stuff right here in Blender. So you can composite it together right here. It's pretty nice. So um, isn't there something to make the specular light in the eye with some funky shape? Yeah, Mike, that, it comes with his eye designer. Um, I just haven't messed with it too much. But there's, uh, yeah, there's, oh yeah, here's the matte baking stuff that you can do. Um, but there's, I can't remember where it's at, but you can, you can mess with the, the highlight. It has its own highlight, so you can set the highlight in there. But this highlight's coming from the, the actual light itself. I think it's this light right here. Yep. There we go. See that? You can also scale it up. Maybe? Nope. It's a different kind of light. Oh, it's a point light. Okay. And I can... Yeah, like I said, I can turn that off or on. And I can also um, hide one of these lights, like turn it off and on. Um, but basically these lights are set up to aim at a dummy object that's in the center here. Um, and that way, anywhere I move this light, it will point at the, at the subject. So it's pretty nice that way. And that's just with an, a, a modifier that's like a, I'm trying to remember what it's called. But it's it's a constraint that constrains the light aimer, the target at the uh, at the uh, the dummy object in there. I keep calling it dummy object because that's what I know it as in Maya. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to Samwise. That's that's the idea. That's the goal. There's just there's a couple bugs um, that I want to work out. It's not not quite ready yet. Okay, and then this backlight here, you can see this is the uh, this is the rim light, and I can crank that up. I want to. And scale it up too to make it a little softer or tighter. And then there's a side light over here that's like a blue color. I'm gonna turn this one down. I, I might turn it off or really low. It has kind of a magenta. Um, those are kind of the three, the three colors I like to use is in my key lights, um, it depends on how many lights I have, but I usually like to have it either a magenta or a yellow, depending on the character. And then the side light is like a blue. And 
then the key light or the, the rim light in the back is usually a bright white just to kind of catch all this stuff. And I can also change this. You can try different light types like a spotlight. And it doesn't it doesn't catch as many, but it's a little more controllable. There you go. So see how it's just barely catching all these things. Because I didn't want it to roll over her shoulders as much as it was. Something like that, yeah. Okay, and then... Let's try... And like sunlight is super bright <laughs> and then a point light is just bar barely there and it's it's a point so in space and then there's spotlight which has a cone and a fall off so the closer you get it the hotter it'll be I like area light for this side one but in Eevee sometimes it'll make the shadows kind of chunky like this and you can crank up the the shadow size so it's not as as chunky um, or you can just turn on cycles, which I will here in a second. But usually I like to get all my lights in place first. And then, then I'll turn on cycles because cycles has a lot of bounce light and it could change the entire look of the character. Um, so let's change that over now and see what it looks like. Yeah. So it takes longer, but again, there's a lot more bounce light happening. The shadows will be nicer. Better turn off my music because it's kind of chunking out. <laughs> it's not looking too bad. I think I, I feel like I need to crank up the key light here a little bit more. I want to see what it feels like if I turn, well, I can move this closer. Then it gets too hot, too white, blows everything out. Is my, um, is my voice or anything chunking out? Because it's probably really using my CPU now pretty hard. <laughs> pretty heavy. I need to um, turn the plasticity down on her skin and these snakes. The, the roughness, crank the roughness up. I kind of like it on her skin, but yeah, in here it doesn't look as nice. And then these snakes look like plastic. And if I had UVs on here, I could set up like a either a tiling uh like a scale like scales you know like a procedural scales i might do that eventually um and i need to uh crank up the let's see the specular on these oops it's good okay cool here let's do this there we go Now, if you keep all of your like materials in the same, um, <laughs> looks like I got a hidden ring in there somehow, a couple of them. <laughs> okay, I must have duplicated them. Um, anyway, if you keep like similar material objects in the same subtool, when you bring it into um, Blender, it will be much easier, and I didn't do this, but it will be much easier to um, edit the material across all like like parts so um but i didn't do that let me see if i named this material rings one let me see if i can rings 101 okay i just changed the material out on these guys to match same with this one So 
that match? Did I select the wrong one? I did. Let's that one. There we go. Same with this. Oops. This one. There we go. Now they all have the same material on them, so they're all that kind of shiny metallic. Doesn't look too bad. Um, let's see here. Let's mess with this skin a little bit. Maybe just her on her body. The just increase that roughness. I'm going to go back to Eevee so it's a little faster. And sometimes I'll just stick with Eevee because it ends up looking nicer, you know? I don't need all the bounced light. Like, I, I'm liking the look of this a little better than Eevee, so... Or, uh, sorry, Cycles. Yeah, I like the, the smoothness right here. Pretty nice. Okay, let's grab these snakes and we can uh, mess with the specular, the rough. You can mess with all this stuff if you want. Um, I just like it to look more like vinyl. I, I guess it's the <laughs> it's the Disney Infinity in me. It's like I just like that vinyl look. And I for these snake eyes though, I want them to be shiny. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, shiny little highlight on them. Looks pretty nice. Maybe these eyebrows could be... Crank up that roughness a little bit. I'm feeling it. Now these, you can see the, um, the facets in there. So what you can do, see the facets, and you can see the facets on this. Um, you can just right click and say shade smooth and that should fix that. Yeah. See, that looks much nicer and select this shade smooth. Not that you can see that in the render, but just want to make sure all of this is shading smooth. Okay. Not bad. Do you ever turn on? smidge of subsurface i don't max because of the the um computation and versus versus what i get in the like the results versus how long it takes to render um what i'll usually do instead is i will do an environment an overall environment light i learned this from my buddy steve james um turn on an overall environment light that is the same color as what you would add as a subsurface. And it will kind of do this overall like wash of that color. And it's usually like a magenta. So let me change, I wanna change this key light. I'm glad you mentioned it, cause I'm gonna try it, but let's change this key light to more of a yellow, like something like this and warmer up a little bit. There we go, that's better. And then I'll do the, let's see what, what we can do with that. Um, I'm just going to use this background color and unhook it from here and hook it right to there. And it will affect the background too, but. Okay, let me switch this. And then we can clip out the background and stick it over top of whatever we want. But see, it's like this very dark, but a little bit of magenta. So change the color of the HDRI. Um, so it's not really using an HDRI right now because it's using this mix. It's just using this background color.
I'm trying to remember. I might be using it, and I'm not. I don't know what I'm doing here. Because this might just be the background color. Yeah, it's affecting it. See, okay, if you look in in her cheek area right here, you can see it's getting lit by the background. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, no H here. It's just using the background color. Okay, so I don't want it that intense. Just kind of want to fill everything overall with that. There we go, and it's a nice uh, complementary color to this green. This is driving me crazy a little bit right here. I gotta adjust her eyes now that now that I'm looking at it. It feels a little too close. Select this. No, sure. Okay, I'm gonna go to um I gotta turn off oh, let's go to scope mode. Change this to so it's not rendering, so it's faster. I just wanna get this um eye material out of the way. It's like blocking this eye from her looking to the side. And then move this um, got this topple auto mask right here, and that's just like mask mask topological in ZBrush. So it'll only move whatever you touch without affecting the other bits. There we go. And Alt Q will switch objects inside here. I don't know why this one didn't. This didn't move. Oh, because I didn't have symmetry turned on. So symmetry is per object per object set, I guess you would say. It looks like I need to turn on smooth shading on her eyelids. But I really like how, um, how Blender displays objects in the viewport. It's just nice how you can see everything that's going on and you can see your mistakes easy, easier. You see that flash of orange for a second. That's just me selecting the other object. Okay, let's take a look and see how that looks in render. That's better. Okay. There. I like how this looks a lot. Um... Let's go back out to object mode. Grab this cloth and see what we can do with that. I mean, I like I like that, but I want to see if I can add some sheen to it and what it would look like if I did this way. Just barely now. Nah, I don't I don't think I like it. <laughs> All right. I just sometimes it's kind of like what what would it look like if the uh with a highlight on there, you know? Hey Overton, how you doing, man? <laughs> you missed so much. 
Uh, yeah, I, I started an hour ago, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm almost done here. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> Let's see here. I'm just inspecting all the things. Now it's got this, this shadow that's kind of cutting across here, I think from the snake. Maybe from the back. Okay, I'm going to try something. I'm going to save this. <laughs> Saved. Whenever you're going to try something, always save. I just want to grab this. Move it just a little bit. There we go. Just to break that that lineup that was bugging me there. I love how soft these lights are too. How soft. I mean, this is Eevee. This isn't even cycles. This is real time rendering. And what's crazy is, um, thanks for helping with my first 3D printed model. Yeah, man. I think it came out great, Overton. How can I get your blender tool? Well, it's not, it's not available just yet, but I will be putting it, um, I will make it available um, when it's, when it's bug free. So there's still some bugs and I'll show you a bug right now. And it has to do with the, um, there's, there's retopology built in here. And if I grab something and I hit tab, you'll see these vertices are really, really big. See these, and that's what I want for the retopology, but I want it to revert back to, um, not having these big vertices. And there's a workaround for it right now, but I want it to be not a workaround. I want it to be. So that's that's a bug we're working on right now. Okay. Anyway, let's... Uh, this is pretty much like in Eevee, you don't really have to render it out because it's, it's, it's live, it's real time. So this is the render. Um, I want to I do cycles. Let's see. I'm going to change this to a smooth shade. There we go. Okay, let's try cycles one more time just to see if it's any better. I love having the ability to switch back and forth. It'll go blank for a second and then fill in. Yeah, see, I don't quite like it as much because it's not really set up to be a cycles render. It's got some really weird bounce light happening right through here. I mean, it's more realistic lighting, but I like the Eevee. Eevee softens it a little bit more. All right, I want I want to pull that light back a little bit. What does that look like? What if I change it to an area light? See, I like what it's doing to the hair, but I don't like what it's doing to the shoulder. It's like making the snake glow really weird. Glow, snake, glow. That's not bad. Then it catches all these bits. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. I like what it's doing with this back snake too, right here and this little bit right there. And then what happens if I scale it up? Usually softens it, which is nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Looks like the shadow on her forehead is a bit jaggy. Can you put more samples in the light for this? I think I can, Mike. Let's check it out. Let 
Maybe remind me where to do that. <laughs> is it in render? Or is it in the light properties itself? Shadow, distance bias, thickness, counting shadows. Maybe it's in the properties. I'm trying to remember where it's at. This is under render. Looking forward to more of these streams. Fun to see the way you render your scopes. Bedtime here in Norway. All right, well, thanks for hanging out. Frame rate, frame start. I'm still I'm still not super familiar with all this stuff. Get the sampling. Let's double the sampling. Shadows, cube size. I could double the shadows here. Let's see what that does. There we go. Let's double it again. That's better. Cascade size. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Light threshold. Okay. Can't help the gnome blender that much to snow. This is a result of low sample. Yeah, no worries, Mike. I found it. It's under shadows. <laughs> da -da -da. So that's that's weird. <laughs> so and you can do yeah, bloom might not be a good thing. Okay. All right. Um, and there's subsurface right here. It does have a little bit on it, but you have to mess with it with the material. You have to put it in the materials and stuff like that. So, or if you have hair. Okay, so I am going to pop this open. Go to the rendering and change this. And then hit F12. And it should just cook it for a minute. So hitting f12 is the render right but like as i said it's ev so it just kind of has to cook it for a second and then boom there it is so look how gorgeous that is oh looks like i need to go and smooth shade all my rings let's see if there's anything else that i missed all the rings such a beautiful render man so good Okay, so let's do that again. I can close this and then go grab these rings. Smooth shade, grab these rings, smooth shade. Anything else? Maybe the snakes. Gotta select them first. Okay. Are we good? We good? I kind of want to look at this for a second. Because it's being smooth shaded. Oh, the body. Look at the body. Let me shade that. Okay. Um, if you look at this, it's being smooth shaded, but I want to put a modifier on there that's an actual subdivision surface. See, that gets a cleaner look. So would you trade Keyshot for Blender for the price? <laughs> yes. It's, it takes a little longer to set up. Um, what, I like about, I, what I like about Keyshot is that right out of the box, you can get a really nice render. It has the ZBrush um, to Keyshot bridge, which is super nice. So I can just push stuff over really easily over to Keyshot and it handles a lot of polygons, right? Keyshot handles a ton and it has a whole bunch of built-in materials that I can just drag and drop onto whatever I want. It'll keep the vertex coloring. Um, one thing I don't care for with Keyshot is how it's an HDRI setup. I mean, that's the, that's the thing I love about it and the thing that I don't like about it as much is um, you, it doesn't really have real lights in there. You know, like there's not lights that you can move around and adjust. Instead, it's like color, color patches on the HDR image that you have to move around and adjust lights that way. 
And it's almost like yelling at your friend to move a light instead of, instead of moving at your, like your blindfolded friend. Right. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's more difficult that way. And inside of Keyshot, it reminds me of, of a, a renderer that I'm used to like from the days of old, like 3d studio max and Maya and, uh, you know, where you're actually moving lights around and you can get just the look you want with stylized characters. Sometimes it's good to have HDR lighting. Um, sometimes I like to have full control because the, the lighting itself is stylized and I'm looking for a certain look, you know, like an animated look a little bit. Um, Hey legend, thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so yeah, the, the, these are just three lights in here. Super simple, a rim light, a key light. And as I said, as I, when I brought in Danny's, um, eye designer, it did bring in another light. Um, I wonder what it looks like with that turned off. Oh, let's see. My life designer. I don't even know where that light lives. I'd have to find it. There it is. Yeah, see, that's, that's feeling that I turned, I turned the other light, um, way, way, way down because I knew how much this light was filling the scene, but this is kind of a cool look too. Um, maybe I can adjust the, the heat on this one. Yeah. See the power is clear up to 5,000. Um, and it's weird that it's highlighting this eye and not this eye which is crazy, but then this eye has some nice reflection to it and this one doesn't, which is, I wish it was the same, but anyway. Um, so let's, yeah, let's, now that this is uh, subdivided rather than just, just smooth shaded, it's looking nicer. Let's uh, actually render this out. Okay. Uh, let's hit F12. And if this was in cycles, you would see the scan line render come to life, kind of like Keyshot. Um, and since it's Eevee, it kind of just pops into existence <laughs> after it's all done cooking, just like that. Boom. Um, and now, yeah, now these rings look a lot smoother and uh, it's looking a lot cleaner. So this, like I said, this is already set up for Instagram size render. And so it's good to go. I like it. And in Photoshop, I might just pop another highlight on here, you know, just to match and that's okay. <laughs> and then you just go to image, uh, save as, and get it exported out of here. Oh, legend. That's sweet. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So legends, like I highly suggest everyone watching now to go registered in the character workshop. You won't regret it. She makes college professors look like amateurs. I don't know if I'd say that, but thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Okay, and yes, I do teach an online course. It's called the 3D Character Workshop, uh, and it's 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can head on over there and find out more about the course. So um, anyway, yeah, let's. I'm just going to save the image out of here. And um, where is it? I'm going to save it. Images. There we go. And just call it Medusa. And then I'm going to go post it. PNG. And I, if I want to, I can take this into uh, Photoshop and do some more stuff to it. Um, I'm not really, I'm not really that much of a um, compositor. Like I don't, I don't really, I, I like the render to look how I want it to look. Um, when I'm done with it, you know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time like tweaking the composite too much. And I probably should, I probably should, I, I shouldn't say that, but that's just, I don't know if it's cause I'm lazy or I just don't know it. I just, I just don't composite too much. Um, I just like it to look how it looks. <laughs> oh, so there you go. Anyway, thank you everybody for hanging out with me today. Um, did you post the Medusa video? So, um, I, I built her during my ZBrush live streams. So if you want to see me build her, it's over what, two or three sessions over there. And then I, 
I finished it up la a couple days ago on my channel and then I rendered it today. So I think five total maybe. Um, what's compositing? That's when you render out different layers of things so you can bring them into Photoshop as layers and adjust them and tweak them like the different colors and the highlights and all that kind of stuff. You can render out um, compositing layers is what it's called. And so you can render out your shadows and your highlights and all the different lights separately. Then you can tune them even more inside of like Photoshop. So, um, and Blender has a compositor built in. I just haven't used it that much. So anyway, this, I believe this is a hundred percent. Yeah. So it's, it's really clean. When, if I back it out, it starts to get jiggity jaggedy like this. That's a, that's a term jiggity jaggedy. Um, so this is the real resolution right here, this level. Yeah. <laughs> Compositing is the entrance into wonderland. <laughs> oh goodness. So anyway, guys, well, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I, again, I really, uh, I want to stream more on my channel. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe today, hit that bell icon. So, you know, when I'm going live next, so you can catch me. So, all right, everybody, thank you and take care. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and we'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll get a, a, a schedule going so you can plan for it instead of me just kind of going crazy. And, <laughs> um, I don't use nuke. I never have. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a sculptor, not a renderer typically, but you have to render out your stuff to show off your sculpts. So I know enough to be dangerous. That's it. <laughs> All right, you guys take care. Have a good one. And, uh, we'll see you later.